Hi, this is Brett Schermett from IBM, and today I'm going to show you how to create a requirement in Doris Next, then automatically generate a test case for that. We're going to go ahead and create a test script, and finally, we're going to run the test case, have one of the test scripts pass, and then we're going to have one of the test scripts fail. And from that, we are going to create a defect from that. I know I just said a lot of stuff, but it really isn't all that much work. A lot of it is done all automatically. So to get started here, I'm just going to hop inside of one of my modules. And then again, what a module is, is that it's just another name for a document. But it really is a cross between a Word document and a spreadsheet. So I went ahead and already created a bunch of requirements. But to show you how to create a requirement, I'm going to hop up to this Create button and click on create other artifact type. And inside here for the initial content, I'm just going to put an example requirement. And then underneath artifact type, I'm just going to select what it is. And that will be a system requirement. I'll leave the artifact format as text. And since I'm not using a base template, I'm just going to leave that as none. Down here is where you can select the folder. And if you want to set any underlying properties, kind of like a tag of, of grouping things together, you can do so right here but I'm just going to click on OK. And now our example requirement has been created right here. Now what we want to do is we want to create a view. And in this view, we want to show all of the test cases that are associated with all these requirements right here. So coming up to this button right here that says configure page settings, clicking on that will reveal a drop down menu. And now this is where you can add all of the attributes. And to see all the attributes available, you just need to click on more down there. And the two things we're going to add, uh, first one is going to be validated by. And the validated by attribute shows all the test cases. And the second one that we're going to add is affected by. And affected by will show us all of the bugs, the defects that are tied into the specific requirement themselves. Now, if we come up top here, we can resize these columns a little bit, have it be displayed a little bit nicer. And then what I need to do is actually save this as a view. And what a view is, is that it allows you to customize all these windows here and essentially have it be able to be referenced for later. Now coming over to the side here, what you need to do is you need to click on the Save as New View button. And I'm just going to put in Test Cases with Bugs. And then right here, you can select if it's personal or shared. A personal view means that only you can see it. A shared view means that everybody in this project can see it. And then we have where to show this view if you want it in just this module, which right here, this is a module and that's where I only want it to be displayed or any modules of the specific type or all of the modules. Then you can specify who can see this review and you can also put in a description as well. And that's not a bad idea to fill that out. I'll just click on OK right here. And now we have saved our view. To get out of the view, all you need to do is click on this and everything will go back to how it looks as default. Clicking on this view again, uh, one quick thing that I want to show you is a lot of people ask, hey, how do I export a view in Excel? And all you need to do is click on the view, click on this drop down menu. And if you click on export view, you can export this as an Excel spreadsheet. Pretty cool feature right there. Now we need to actually generate some test. And what you could do is that if you only want to do one case at a time, well, you can mouse over this edit pen link, click on add link underneath validated by, click on new, and we can fill out this information here. But I'll just do this example, example one test, and uh, I recommend filling out the rest of the information right here. Now we have one requirement tied into one test case, but that can take some time if you need to do each individual requirement at a time here. So to speed up the process a little bit, let's go generate automatic test cases for all these requirements. So one thing you must have enabled before you can do this is global configuration. And if your project has that enabled, all you need to do is click on the menu bar over here and go over to global configuration management section. I'm just going to open this up in a new tab. And then I'm going to click on Browse Configurations and underneath Show All. So I have my configuration right here, and I'm just going to click into that. And then from here, underneath Test, as long as all the projects are connected up here correctly, 
All you need to do is click on this and be taken directly into the testing environment itself. Now, it's important that you navigate to uh, test management in this way because if you do not, you'll get an error that pops up saying, hey, you don't have global configuration enabled. And if you do, this is the way that you need to navigate to reach test management in the correct place. And a way you can verify that is if you take a look at uh, up top here in the right hand corner, you'll see that says, hey, it says base model initial development. I know that I'm working inside of the correct configuration where I want to generate these automatic test cases for. Now I'll come underneath planning tab and click on create test plan. Here I'm just going to put in example test plan for design requirements. And then I'll click on save. Now one thing I just want to talk about before we get into generating the automatic test cases is the test plan over here. Essentially what a test plan is, and I'll just click through a couple of these sections here, is it's just like headers in a Word document. And you want to fill out all the information here, so that way you have a really uh, great test plan with a lot of rigor in there, and everyone can really get a good idea about what's going on. If you want to change up some of these sections, all you need to do is come down to this Manage Section button, and you can add and remove sections by just clicking on one and going over this button right here. And if you want to remove it, all you need to do is click on it again and click on the back arrow. But I'll just click OK on that. Um, one important thing to note is any changes made, you do need to save. And it will just let you know right up top here saying, hey, there's some unsaved changes. You should save them. And that's what we're going to do right here. Now, to generate these test cases, we're going to go underneath requirements collections links. And what we need to do is we need to tie this test plan into the module that we want to create all of the requirements for. To do that, I'm going to click on this green plus button right here. And it's going to pop up with installation right there. If this window does not pop up and say, hey, global configuration needed, go back a minute or two in this video and watch how to navigate to the correct component in global configuration. Now we're taking a look at design requirements. And what you want to do is you want to make sure that this view is available here that we just created. If you don't see the view here, an issue that could have happened is if I just hop back here, go to this view, click on edit view, is that if it's not um, saved for everyone here, where it's who can see this view, everyone, that could be an issue. You might need to redo this view. And if you click on that button right there, you can also select the roles as well right here. So let's go click on cancel. Um, just make sure that it is a shared view instead of a personal view. Hopping back over to the test plan here, you need to click on the view and click on OK. And then make sure you click on Save. After you click on Save, this button will appear right here. That is the fifth button over from the right hand side. That when you mouse over it, it says Reconcile Requirements in Collections. Click on that button. And now what it's going to do is it's going to look at all the requirements and say, OK, all these requirements are new, but it, only this one has a linked test case. And now we want to generate a bunch of test cases for these requirements. And there's a couple cool things that I want to call out here. If you want to generate test cases for, say, all the requirements on this page, all you need to do is come over to this button and click on Select All Items on this page. But if you don't want to do that, we can do Deselect on Page and say you want to select all 26 of them. Well. Go up to the top here, click on Show All, then click on Select All Items on this page, and now all of these items will be selected, so every single requirement in the module can have a test case automatically generated for it. And now, say we don't want to generate a, a test case for this requirement because it already has one that we created for it, all we need to do is uncheck it. After that, we need to generate these test cases. So to do that, just mouse over any of these requirements here, and click on the button that appears right here that when you mouse over it, it says actions. If you want to do a one off test case, click on generate test case. But since we want to generate all the other test cases, click on generate and then it will tell you how many test cases it's going to generate. And then after that, it says test cases. Clicking on that will reveal this pop up menu here and the name is going to automatically default to the requirement summary. And then what we need to do is you can assign an owner to this. So I'm going to assign it to myself. We can select the template to use, and I'm, since this is a safe template, I'm going to leave this as such. Um, you can also create custom templates, or you can click one from the preset list right here. We have agile, safe, um, really whatever works for you and your organization. 
And then since this uses global configuration, we need to file it against a component if you want to, or you can leave it unassigned. You can also change the test type as well. So I'm going to put it as a functional test. Just showing this menu one more time, here are the six tests out of the box, and you can also create your own test type. But I'm just going to click on OK right here, and it's going to go through and generate the test cases. We finished generating our test cases, so all we need to do is click on Next here, and it's going to say, yep, no requirements were removed or deleted. Perfect. If you want to see some more details, you can click on Show Details right there. But I'm just going to click on Close. Now, after this has been generated, let's go take a look at the test cases. And to do that, I'm going to hop down to this test cases right here. And we can see all of the, these test cases we just generated and that they validate these requirements. To actually open up the requirements, there's a couple of different ways you can get to it. But all you need to do is mouse over the blue hyperlink text because anything that's blue, that is a hyperlink we can navigate to. And you can click on it here, but I'm just going to open it up in a new tab. And then we can see this requirement and all the other requirements tied into their specific test case. Now let's go into one of these test cases and generate a test script for it. So I'm just going to click on this and I will be taken directly over to the test case itself. Then from test script, we're going to go right over here to this scroll with the plus button, click on create test script, and then inside the content, we're going to want to fill it out. That way it's as easy as possible to generate the test script and the name I'm going to, going to put in example test script and then here is this is where you want to fill out all the information and a little bit of a nice trick here is that if I put in something like step one I'll do open it up step two I'll do click around step three I'll do click around some more and then step four I'll be close windows now, if you do it like this, where you do, where you type on a line, you hit return, you type on another line, hit return, what will actually happen when you click OK here is that then you need to go up to save and then clicking on this example test script, it'll actually break it out into four different steps here, where we have step one, open it up, two, click around, three, click around some more, and four, close windows. What you could do is you could add steps right here, but it's just so much easier to do it in that previous window. But here as well, you can also add images. There's a lot of different stuff that you can do. Just make sure you hit return between the lines and it will make everything look pretty nice. Now let's go through and actually test this test script. But to do that, I'll just back it up just to show you all. And I will click on the test script right here. And then coming up to this play button here, we're gonna click on run and say, all right, we're going to run through this test case here. And the test plan is going to be this example test plan, the duration, we don't need to check as anything, the test environment, since we don't have any of that stuff filled out, we're just going to leave that as such. The test script, since I already selected it down there, it says, okay, it's example test script. But if you want to change it, you could do so right here. Then I'm going to leave the rest not filled out here. And then there's a couple of cool things you can do is that you can create a result without executing if you want to, and you can select the result itself here. I want to go through the test case as well, so I'm going to just click on finish right here. And now we're going to need to step through this test case. Uh, one thing that I just want to let you know about is the customizations right over here. And what you can do is you can change the view as such. So clicking on this view, I will put the results right here. Uh, this view puts the results on the side. And this is the view that I do prefer because you can create a defect super quickly and easily from this view right here. Or you have this view as well, and you can kind of change the column display settings right here. And what the column display settings are referring to is resizing these different columns here. So what I want to do is I, I want to go through these test things. Now I want to go through the test steps. And I can see, hey, zero out of four steps completed. And I need to fill out some information here. It's a good idea to fill out this with pictures, videos, and, and stuff along the lines. but since I just want to get through this, I'm just going to click, yeah, this passed, okay, uh, good, passed, clicked around, worked, passed, clicked around some more, yep, passed, click on that, and finally close windows, passed. So we had a very successful test result, and now if I go up top here, I can either click on close, but I want to click on share result, and actually see how everything worked out.
And I can see, oh cool, everything worked. Now if I come over here to this design requirements module, and all I need to do is just refresh the page. And then scrolling down, one thing that I just want to show you right here is this icon. This icon shows a green check mark. What that means is the test was passed. All these other tests have not been ran yet, so there is no uh, green check mark here or a failed icon showing. Now I'm going to hop into a different test and we're going to go through the same process. Clicking on it will take me directly to the test case and then I'm going to go down to test scripts and since I want to reuse the past test script that I just created all I need to do is click on this green plus icon and then I can click on example test script and load this in. I'm just going to click on add and closed and then this will allow me to reuse what I previously created for this test. Finally I'll click on save and now what I need to do is I need to rerun this test to verify, hey, if this requirement worked out, I'm going to click on that green play button right here and click on run online. Now I'm going to go through and I'm going to assign a test plan. I'm going to leave the other information as blank, but it is a great idea to fill out this information here. Finally, I'll click on finish. And I made sure that I have my view set over here. So I'm going to say that, yep, step one worked. But then step two, yeah, that worked as well. Step three, great news here, but step four, it just wouldn't close. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to automatically create a defect that is linked to everything in the system here. And I'm gonna come over to the buttons over on this right hand side. Mousing over the first one, I'm gonna click on create new defect and click on create new defect. This will pre-populate with all the information from the test case and also the script itself. So we can see the steps to produce it, uh, you can see the project area and a bunch of other information. We need to select where it is filed against, and I'm gonna say it's filed against the general project and the severity as what we want to assign it as. We can fill out the other information here, which is, that is a great idea to do so. I'm just gonna click on okay now, and it's going to associate this defect with this test case and with the requirement itself. So I'm going to make sure that I click that it failed, and then I'm just going to click on close. Now, coming over to the requirement, all I need to do is go over to this menu on the right hand side and click on this, and I'm just going to open up in a new tab. And then we can see, hey, that there's a bug associated with this requirement because it failed. And one other thing I just want to call out right here is this red icon on the uh, little icon right there, and that says, hey, that failed, but this one's green because it passed. And if you want to get to the defect, all you need to do is click on that defect right there. And now we're automatically taken over to workflow management. And if and we can see the descriptions are automatically filled out. And if I go underneath links, we can see, hey, it's tied in to everything else right here. And now one other thing that I just want to show you quickly is that if I bounce back to uh, this requirement right here, a very useful view for this is that if I click on this button right here and click on open links explorer, it can show things in a kind of top-down view where you have this requirement and we can see, hey, it's affected by this. It's also validated by this as well. And you can go down so many different levels of this. I believe, yep, it is. We can go down to a total of six levels and you can check off a bunch of other stuff. So when you have one requirement or a change request and a bunch of test cases connected up to that, a bunch of bugs and defects, this view right here will provide you a very good top-down overview of, hey, what's impacting what down the line. Thank you so much for watching. If you have any other questions, please don't hesitate to reach out to me. You can find my contact information in the description below.